through all Aventasia. The alliance of humans, elves, and dwarves fought against the evil army of the Shadows. The war had devastated the country for years upon years, and yet, no one gained the advantage. And so it was that in that time of deepest despair, that an old archaeologist uncovered the location of the artifact of the Bloody Fate. The artifact could fulfill every wish, and thus decide the war, for one side or the other. Led by warlock Monkus, son of Archwitch Mortroga, the Shadows hunted for the artifact. And they would have reached it first, were it not for a group of heroes who stood against them. Wilbur, the young gnome who was the first of his clan to become a mage. Ivo, the courageous elven princess from the Woodland Realm. And the Critter, a hairy creature from the Northlands, companion of the most brilliant of the heroes. Nate Bonnet, who was supposed to spend the rest of his life at the side of an elven princess, who deserved a kingdom and all the riches in the world, who should stop wasting time talking about himself in the third person. Good, good, this is good. Although the ground is still getting closer. Part of the jetty. At least some of it survived the explosion. If I'm lucky, this will go all the way up to the island. <laughs> but somehow I really doubt it will. Nate, how's it going? Good, for now. Could it be that your spell didn't quite work out the way you planned? I did tell you there were certain risks involved. Risks? What risks? Now, gin magic is a complicated affair. It's difficult to get the dose right, and when one hasn't done magic for a while, things can go a little bit wrong. Like you killing me, for example? Not... not intentionally. No big thing. So, now that we have a little time to kill, why don't you tell me a little something about yourself? Oh, right. Well, um, yes, I came into this world in an oasis in the Umzu Desert, and at that time, I was... Are you out of your ever-loving mind? Definitely not the time to reminisce. Then why did you ask? I could use some help here, Benny. Well, you did see what happened last time I cast a spell. Time to make up for it, then. Now shake a leg. Oh, I don't know. I might just end up making everything worse. Let me see. I'm accompanying tons of boulders in a plummet to certain painful death. My death. So just how do you think you could make things any worse? Worse? I could set the air on fire, or it could start smelling. Very bad. Can't you just stop time? Or wings! Give me wings! How about that? Oh, this is all terribly complicated. I really don't feel up to it today, Nate. Benny! Perhaps tomorrow? I really do need to think through what's happened today properly. You get me out of the mess you got us into right now! Please don't yell at me! I just can't take it anymore! Benny! Ah! The state he's in, we can forget about miracles. I gotta find something easy, something even he thinks he can do. Yes. 
A flying carpet. Is that too much to ask? I'm not talking to you. Why, you... Uh, I'm sorry I criticized your work, Benny. And? And? And that I shook your land. And everything else. You meant well. Well, all right, then. I forgive you. What can I do for you? Carpet! Hmm. A flying carpet. Hmm. Shouldn't be too hard. Should I really dare? Am I really up to it? Yes! What the heck? What happened here? No! Oh! Welcome, adventurer. I am the tutorial, guardian of gameplay, explainer of controls. Use the left stick to move the character. Well done. If you walk up to an object, context-sensitive actions will be displayed. Walk up to that big lever and press X. The robot has used the lever as this seemed logical to him. Now press circle so that the robot looks at the lever rather than uses it. Excellent. The robot thinks the lever is working. But if that's so, then where is the problem? That hatch over there, walk up to it and press X. Little chap seems to think there are advanced engine mechanics hidden behind there. Perhaps that's where the problem is. Press X again next to the hatch. The first time you press X will allow you to look, the second to use. Why? Because after a player character has looked at something, the most logical thing to do next is use it. It's quite simple. Press circle when you want to look at something. Press X in order to do whatever that character thinks is the next most sensible move. Is the machine working again? Walk up to the lever and press X. Appears to be a new problem. Better take a closer look at the engine. Oops, that wasn't very helpful. Please pick up both gears by pressing X. If you can reach several objects from one position, you can use the right stick to select the one you want to interact with. Great work. 
items you pick up will go into your inventory. You open and close your inventory by pressing triangle. To use an inventory item, select it with X and then select the object that you want it to be used with. Use one of the gears in your inventory with the engine of the town model. Excellent. Now how about dealing with the second gear? Perfect. You better oil the engine before you switch the machine back on again. That should do it. Time to crank it up. Examine objects in the inventory in more detail. Pick up the damaged figure and the toolbox. Then open the inventory with triangle and press circle in order to examine the toolbox. Great, you found a few items in the toolbox. You can use these items on each other by initially selecting the first object with X and then using it on the second object again with X. Try to repair the figure in the inventory. Well done. Now place the figure back in its rightful place on the balcony of the castle and start the... about you. Oh, mother. 
What's wrong with you? Everything's fine. No, you don't look well at all. Positively rotund. It is unseemly for an elf princess to cope with her frustrations by comfort eating. If you carry on like this, you won't fit into your wedding dress. I don't have any intentions of marrying any time soon. Oh, darling, we've been through that already. Prince Lalilos is going to be arriving next week. You will like him. He's charming and... Look, he sent us a picture of himself and his sister. Um, which of the two is the sister? The elf nobility, unfortunately, has not got any unshaven Neanderthals to offer. You'll just have to get used to that. I don't have the slightest interest in that person. Not anymore. You are at the heart of the Elf Kingdom, in the castle of your family where you belong. No one here should be sad, tired, or fat. I only want what's best for you, Ivo. I didn't want to tell Mother, but I've not been feeling too well lately, Cheap. I'd say the same thing, but we elves hardly ever get ill. Yeah, you've got a point there. I spent almost a year in the human world, and they have some very strange ideas about personal hygiene. Well, I thought perhaps it's a curse. Oh, no, you won't. I'll take care of it myself. Mother would make a state occasion out of it. I don't know either, but I'm sure there's a medical book down in the library. No, rest is not what I need just now. I'll go down to the library and look up what's wrong with me, completely alone, just like a grown-up elf. I'm not going to be stopped, neither by locked doors nor by you. Normally this bowl is full of fruit and nuts. Presumably Mother has decided I should be without such things whilst I am, as she says, positively rotund. A beautiful red flower. It was only put here a few days ago. Sometimes Mother orders a new plant that looks nice in my room. And then it's replaced and planted in the garden. I've been sleeping badly of late, and sometimes I feel tired all day long. I've never been ill, but something isn't right. I hope I'll find the answer in the library. Fresh water from the spring brook, the little stream that rises here in the castle and provides for the whole valley. People come from far and wide to drink it. Cheap Cheap likes to look at his reflection. He strikes a pose and then tries to impress himself with it and succeeds most of the time. My jewellery box serves as a podium for the vertically challenged narcissist. Could you please move aside? 
I want to get into my jewellery box. He doesn't listen to me anymore, since I almost caused him to be roasted by fireballs, decapitated by swords, and eaten by monsters. Mother has permitted him to disregard any of my orders that go against her wishes. His interpretation of this can be liberal. I had my birthday during the few weeks that we spent living together here in the Elf Burrow. That was a big deal for Wilbur. He couldn't understand that the significance of birthdays tends to fade after a few hundred years. He insisted on making me a present. He sat in the corner for days knitting me this hat with his little gnarled fingers. The times when the others were here in the elf burrow, those were the best that I've ever had. The critter could never keep still when I was drawing him. He was always pulling faces and trying to make me laugh. Wilbur was so excited. He loves elves and our stories. He spent hours sitting with my father and listening to him talk about bygone ages. <sighs> Complete idiot. A guard with a spear and shield, and like all elven figures, immaculate. An envoy from the Far East gave me this musical box years ago. Wherever I go, I always have its tune in my head. When Nate and the others lived here, I don't know why, but I know Mother wasn't happy about it. She moved him to a guarded guest room at the other end of the castle. And Cheap Cheap was ordered never to leave my side. Wilbur didn't know that autumn would last for years to come and that elves don't feel the cold, but it was still the best birthday present I've ever had. Mother looked at the hat with so much revulsion that I didn't take it off for days. Wilbur just beamed with pride. Hey, Cheep Cheep, I need the mirror. I only need it for a minute. Oh, he's not budging, and his pecs can be damn painful when he puts his mind to it. We have many exotic plants here in the palace, but sunflowers are my favourite. Apologies, I need a few of your seeds. I used to look into the woods for days on end, imagining what the world beyond would be like. Now I know, and I think I miss it. Hey, Cheap, you hungry? Fancy some delicious sunflower seeds? You want the seeds? I want to get out of this room. Could we not come to some arrangement? I know that royal servants are unbribable, but sunflower seeds... Huh. 
then perhaps not. Cheep Cheep, would it be possible for you to stop admiring yourself for two seconds and move over to stuffing your beak instead? Don't say I never look after you. Precious stones, sparkling earrings and necklaces. All the stuff I have to wear at official functions. If it were up to Mother, I would have trunkfuls of this stuff, and a wing of the castle would be my wardrobe. She just can't understand why Pa and I aren't into this sort of thing. The box as well as its hinges and lock has been fashioned from one piece of tree root. A masterful piece of workmanship, just like everything else here in the elf burrow. Pearls, precious stones, sparkling earrings and necklaces. Goodness knows what I could use this tap for right now. It may not be befitting of a princess, but this isn't the first time that I've climbed into the garden via the balcony, and it won't be the last. I, um, I'm just doing my morning exercises. I wasn't going to. <sighs> of course, I could just ignore him and climb down into the garden anyway. He would, however, make a beeline to Mother and tell on me, and who knows what the two of them would cook up for me next. thirsty. Since Nate left without saying so much as a word, Mother seized the opportunity to marry me off to a proper elf prince. So far I've managed to frighten off every candidate successfully, but she's starting to lose her patience. It reminds me of a wood over in the west where I learned to use a bow and arrow. <sighs> Mother's locked me in as if I was 200 again. Since I secretly escaped from the elf burrow last year, she's taken to guarding me closer than ever before. It's my mirror, really, but Cheep Cheap will probably miss it much more than me. Hey, 
withdrawal symptoms. Okay, he's not looking this way. Oh, there is more than one kind of stretch exercise, you know. Perhaps you'd like to train with me. No chance. I can't sneak down as long as Cheep Cheep's on guard. The plant would survive, I'm sure, but at the moment I don't need any more. Pearls, precious stones, sparkling earrings and necklaces. Goodness knows what I could use this tap for right now. I just need the music box a minute. You don't need to turn your head away from your beautiful reflection for one second. Come on. Shh. He... He's gone to sleep. It got dark and he's simply... No matter. I can now enjoy a few moments of peace. Let's go. As expected, no one here. My parents are in the throne room ruling the lands, or rather mother is. A fairly small, unattractive tree. Huh. I'd like to see how attractive you'd look if someone disturbed you on the pot in the morning. You mean... Anyway, what could I do for you, my little beauty? Mother put me on a diet this morning so that I'll look perfect for my wedding. Well, everything has to be perfect for her. No such thing in nature, of course. Or rather, everything is perfect. If you just let nature run its course. You tell that to Mother. I have, many times. She'd be very clever in some things, but very daft concerning that. Now then, she is the Queen. I'm old enough to be able to call a spade a spade. <laughs> spade, gardener, get it? You and Father, you get along well, don't you? Ah, no one understands more about nature than him, that's for sure. But I don't often ask him for help. Thinking has never got a field dug if you get my drift. He's just more of a theorist. Ah, the mud on your feet, the smell of fresh earth, all that joy and life. And he's missing out on the lot by just sitting around up there and doing nubbit. The garden always looks fantastic, Arbor. Thank you. It's a girt load of work. People always think elf gardens are fabulous by their very nature. But you need a mighty good gardener. You have got green fingers. Ah, that's just moss, my dear. Happens if you spend all day grubbing around in the earth and don't wash your hands properly in the evenings. You tree shepherds do a great job. <laughs> tree shepherds? The trees just stand there. Why do they need a shepherd? However, I quite fancy one of those shepherd dogs. Hey, Rex, do you want to be my shepherd dog? 
<laughs> nah, my darling. I'm a gardener. Nothing more, nothing less. What are you up to today, then? Got much on? Oh, the usual. You know, it never rains in the elf burrow, but the flowers need their water, so I water them every day. Ah, the curse of good weather. <laughs> the weather isn't the only thing which isn't right. I've been here 30 years, and for 30 years we've had autumn. Time passes differently in the elf burrow. Slower. Well, that's why everyone grows to be ancient here, obviously. But if we had a bit of normal weather in the usual seasons, oh, there'd be a lot more variety here. I have to get on. Yep, got a bit to do myself. I just don't know what's wrong with that plant over there. Your mother got a whole heap of flowers given to her the other day from a fairy delegation. All of them took good and strong, just not that one. Perhaps it needs a special type of soil or something. Well, anything's possible. If I don't think of something soon, I'll have to ask your father. He can have a little chat with her and she might tell him what's up. Um, if you're going in, it'd be nice if you didn't tell my mother that you saw me out here. Oh, you playing hooky again? My lips are sealed. It doesn't look very well at all. It's unusual for flowers to hang their heads in this garden. Normally they blossom in our good earth, not to mention the power of Arbor's green fingers. Mother thought it was unseemly of the bees to build their hive in our garden. I don't think she could get used to the thought that she would no longer be the only queen here. Arba's obviously concerned about his flower. I don't know the names of all the plants in the garden. Grandmother knows them all, which is probably down to the fact that it was her that gave many of the plants their names a few thousand years ago. Shite beerwood, sweat tea, dodder flower, fat hen, bistort, stink root. Mm. We no longer invite her to family gatherings. This is Mother's Mirror. It's said that you can see into the furthest corners of the land and know what's happening in every part of the world. At the moment, it's no more than a shallow bowl. The water's missing. A handy smooth stone, Arba's sheep dog. Arba's pot, literally. There's only a little water left in the bird bath. Cheep Cheep always says that it evaporates quickly. I, however, think that the constant need to replenish the water is more down to his unbridled, joyous splashing and not insignificant body mass. There are elf-made ponds and streams all over the palace ground. Their water is said to have healing powers. No wonder considering where it comes from. That's a weeping willow. It appears to be so content it looks anything but sad. The spring brook emerges up there. It's still small here, but it becomes one of the largest and most important rivers in the woodland realm. A few years ago, this dragon was causing a whole lot of grief, 
a bounty was put on its head and all heroes of the land were encouraged to hunt it down. Forty brave warriors penetrated its lair and slew it. They brought the head to the palace where it was displayed in triumph. The strange thing was that a bit later more adventurers came carrying an identical head. Then more and more heroes arrived. A great example of the variety of our world's fauna. Some of the ideas Mother Nature has can be quite off the wall. Several books about animals, an atlas, a book about humans, actually more of a brochure. And what's this? Fishing for the moderately talented. Hmm. Goldsmithing, masonry, and a book about carpentry. Like all books in this library, it's a guest present. The logic behind this must be, those elves, they have so many beautiful statues and items of wood, they'll be really interested in this, why don't we present them with a book about it? What they don't realize though, is that if we're interested in a subject, then we'll already know pretty much all there is to know about the matter, and the book's of no use to us whatsoever. Working with wood. There's a master whittler down in the valley. I've enjoyed watching him in the past. He carves animal figures so real that humans and dwarfs believe that they are actually animals turned into wood. This one's more about interiors, making furniture and the like. Plane the wood down by a pixie's thumb and saw the board into two equal length pieces. Hmm, who knows what that might be good for? <laughs> 